Hey, good morning. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Chat with Ryan Frank. So glad that you are here. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, podcast listeners, wherever you're catching the coffee chat today. So glad you're here. If you have something you'd like to talk about or if you have a question, uh, please text it to 833. Right there's the number 833-792-6372. Good to see everybody. Thank you for joining me today for the coffee chat. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you're doing <clears throat> to make a difference. And what we are committed to is helping you as you make a difference. One way that we can help you is this. Go to Kids Matter. You're going to see a banner about Global Kidmen Day. Now, you can just go to globalkidmenday.com, um, but you need to check out this site if you've not been on here in a while. I sent an email this morning if you get my emails. And I asked a question, do your volunteers need a reboot? You know, th during this pandemic, it sure has made it interesting in re not just uh, retaining those volunteers, but engaging volunteers. And then as a lot of you are looking at comebacks, some of you have already come back, you're looking at comebacks. How do you re-engage? How do you reboot these volunteers? Global Kidman Day is a great way to do that. It's happening on August the 8th. It is... Um, a three-hour event for your children's ministry team where we are bringing conference quality material and training to your church. Ideally, all of your leaders, your volunteers, they come together at the church for this three-hour training. If that's not feasible, we're going to give you links so that your volunteers can participate from home. Uh, but we have put a lot of energy, a lot of money, a lot of time into this to serve you and to serve you well. So I hope that you will jump in either as a host or, or get a watch pass. But we've got a great lineup of speakers. We're going to talk about children's ministry, Sunday school, all that post-pandemic. We're going to talk about racial issues, racial and ethnic diversity, which is a very hot topic right now. Uh, but then we're also going to talk about the nuts and bolts of children's ministry loving kids, presenting the gospel, keeping their attention. This is going to be a great reset. Please go check out globalkidmenday.com. Hundreds of you have already committed to participate from literally all around the globe, and our panel of speakers represent that. I'm super excited about this event. Saturday, August 8th at 9 a.m., whatever your local time is. This is kind of like a simulcast, but it's different. We're going to actually give you the download link 10 days in advance. So you download the entire event as the leader. You've got it. You don't have to have Wi-Fi for this thing. All you need is your computer and a screen, and you're good to go, globalkidmenday.com. Marta Cortez. Marta Cortez is currently a preschool director at a wonderful Baptist church down in Brandon, Florida. Marta, why don't you jump on here with me? Good morning, Marta. Good to see you. Um, saw you for a second. Marta uh, is an amazing part of the children's ministry community, part of the I Love Kidmen Facebook group. Marta and I first met. Boy, Marta, I feel like it's been at least five years ago that we met, but it's probably been longer than that, hasn't it? It has. The first time I met you, Ryan, in Tampa was in 2010. You came to a small church uh, to do a training. Yes, I remember that. Was that 2010? 2010. I was thinking back on that and I thought 2010, that was a long time ago. Man, before thought, that was a decade ago. Yeah, before you started Kids Matter magazine. I, I love it. That's really, really And neat. I have followed you since. <laughs> that is neat. Well, and I feel like we're friends because, well, we are friends, but I, yes. I, feel like, I feel like we're connected. It's crazy how Facebook and social media does that. I enjoy um, your pictures you post on Facebook and keeping up with your ministry and stuff. You're doing a great, great job. Um, you. Now, who's that Who's that little girl on the wall behind you? That is, yeah, you could see that. That is my um, now 23-year-old. Um, I, I wondered. I love Carissa. that. Yeah, one of my two girls. I love it. Love it. So why did she get the big picture on the other wall? And well, the other, the other one gets a little one down on the shelf. What's that all no, about? There's another big picture of the other one. Oh, there <laughs> is? Okay. Yeah. All right. Not enough wall space for everybody's big picture. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Well, I, and I'm just teasing. Now, Marta, there's a lot we could talk about, but I want you to share, because 
I want you to share about the the network, the this group that you are learning learning together with. You're reading together, and you become friends. This is really neat, and I want you. I want I want you to share the story. Then I want to help connect the dots with everybody who's listening or watching. Sure, Ryan. Um, I um, you know I was thinking about um, the idea that we've thrown that phrase around a lot of. We're in this together through through this pandemic through and through this COVID, and I was just reflecting on the beauty of how God has allowed me to be in this network. Um, this is a network of uh, women leaders. We we met many years ago, several years ago, um, at, through a conference that we attended. Um, we participated in some training together, and from that point on, we have continued to um, build trust um, and develop time together so that we can build that trust and communicate, speak into each other's lives. Um, we are a diverse group, so we're from various denominations. We are all over the U.S. and Canada. And so, okay, I was going to ask you that, not to interrupt. I, I wonder if, if this is a group of people around you or literally you're all over. We are all over. Yeah. So we have California and Ohio and, you know, Kansas and Canada, two are in Canada. And so this network of, of women that we, you know, that speaks into each other's lives, we pray for each other, we uh, encourage each other in our calling. Um, we uh, speak to each other into each other when we have doubts about our calling or our leadership. And so uh -huh. we even do a book club together once a week and, um, and join together to learn. We celebrate each other's uh, milestones and family celebrations. And it's a beautiful thing to have that circle of friends in ministry to cheer you on. And to it make is, you a better it? leader, make you a better leader. It's just been a joy to, to do that these years with them. I, I want everybody to hear this because so many children's ministry leaders out there feel alone. They feel alone. Um, a lot of you, a majority of you are female. You are leading, which creates an interesting dynamic when you're a female in leadership. And a lot of you that are females in leadership, um, most of the staff are men. Oftentimes, and so you feel you feel not only just alone in the fact that children's ministry is often um, neglected as much as it shouldn't be. It's, but then you are a a girl on staff with all of these guys, uh, but you don't have to be you don't have to go out alone. Now I know there are things like I love Kidmen community that things like this help. Kidmen Academy they help. Uh, ways we can stay connected. But I love what Marta has done in this group of ladies that they decided, you know what, we're going to be intentional about encouraging and supporting each other. And how long have you been doing this for? We have been together for three years now, um, more intentionally like this. And so yeah. um, right now we're meeting twice a week. We make time for this um, because we feel it's that important. Um, you know, one of them, uh, one of our leaders is in California. So when we meet early in the morning, she's up at 6 a.m. So community, building a community like that of, of, of leaders that are your inner circle or those that can really, um, really let you, let you be vulnerable, let you share your doubts, let you share uh, struggles, let you share your joys. Um, being in that community takes a commitment. You know, we commit to, to each other and we commit to speaking truth and love to each other. And um, it's, it's a beautiful thing. The unity that God has allowed us to experience um, is really a special thing. And I so, yes, that. there are big communities and networks and Facebook. And those, those are also part of growing as a leader and also networking. But then there's that drill down inner group that you develop in community that is more intentional and knows, knows you and trusts you and you trust them a little bit more. I, I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, you need you need a small group of people that know your name and know what's going on in your life and in your heart and that you can confide in. Do you, so when you all are meeting twice a week, do th does this happen on Zoom? How are you doing this? Yeah, right now we're doing it on Zoom. We have been doing it on Facebook, but right now we're doing it on Zoom. Um, and um, we've, we've done it on Facebook as well. Um, but now with um, Facebook rooms, we, we've, we've jumped to that as well. So we just find a way to gather together no matter what season we're in. And yeah, there are times when each of our ministries pull us in a different direction and we might miss a meeting, but we catch up. Um, then we re they're recorded right now. And so we can go back and, and see what we were praying for each other about and what happened in the meeting, what we were discussing. And the beauty of it is that 
we're all in different types of churches. Some are urban churches, small town churches, large churches. And so we are so diverse in age and um, denomination. And it's just such a beautiful thing because one of our team members might have been able to read a book or be on a podcast or be um, in another area that we didn't uh, participate in. And so she'll give us the ideas that were shared. So she goes, hey, you guys, I just, just learned this and this is so wonderful. So there's a exchange of information as well and ideas and um, connection. Gotcha, I love it. Uh, listen community, whether you're watching or listening to this right now live or catching this later today, maybe you feel alone. Maybe you feel like, man, I wish I had that. I wish I had a group like that. Um, I wish somebody would invite me to be a part of a group like that. Here's my challenge for you. You be the person that starts it and right. find some people, jump in the I Love Kidman Facebook group, or if you have a local network or you're connected with your denomination in the state or wherever you're at, say, I'm thinking, you know, I'm looking for six people. I'm looking for eight people that, that want to take a journey with me and just, we want to start jumping on Zoom every week or every other week and praying for each other. Be that, and, and I know that might be out of some of your comfort zone. Maybe mm -hmm. some of you, you feel a little more um, in, introverted or a little more shy, or you don't know where the one to reach out and to create something like this, but do it, do it, do it, do it for yourself, do it for others. Marta, this is really an inspiring story. And I love it that you have continued this for three years. Yeah, so, you know, there's a, I just recently read an old African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go um, farther, go together. So you can go fast by yourself, but you can go farther when you go together. I so I really, even if you're an introvert, like you said, I really would recommend that um, you ask God, hey, God, where, where is that? Where's that group of people? Where are those people? And then just continue to build that trust and speak into others as well, the same way that others are speaking to you, because it gives you such perspective. You know, ministry, ministry can have moments and seasons where man, you're either stuck or you're in a situation where you're not sure how to move forward. And these, these networks, this group of community, this tribe helps to give you perspective, helps you to see angles that you might not be seeing and even speaks into you um, areas where you go, do I have the strength to do this? And they say, yes, I see the strength in you. This is how you've led before, go for it. And they give you the encouragement you need to move past those stuck moments in ministry. I love it. Marta, wrap up by telling us for someone that's either in a group like this or this has planted a seed that I should do something like this. What's one tip, just one tip, you could probably give several, one tip that really makes things like this, a group like this work well, one tip. Be willing to be vulnerable mm -hmm. um, and really be honest and trust and it. trust. Trust others with your life. It's Marta Cortez from Brandon, Florida. Marta, thank you for joining thank me you. on the coffee chat. And Marta and I have been talking this week. We already know what we're going to talk about next on the coffee chat when you come back. So thank I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag yet. We'll have you back in a couple of weeks if you're in. Thank you, Ryan. We're better together and stronger when we're in community. Yes, we are. We are. And thank you for being such a champion in this community. You're making thank a you, big Ryan. difference. All right. Take care. Everybody. And Marta. Bye. Yes. You got to have me come to your church this January when it starts getting cold up here in Indiana. Okay. <laughs> I will. Sorry All right, curious. I'm holding you to that. All okay, right. Okay, goodbye. It's Mara Cortez, part of the I Love Kidman community, a preschool pastor leader down in Brandon, Florida. And I love that. For some of you, if you feel like you are alone, there's no reason for that. Uh, you need lean in on this community, but then find some people like Marta has done for three years from Canada all over the United States. They're jumping on Zoom twice a week and doing a book club and encouraging each other. And maybe God is, maybe this is a seed God has put on your heart today that I need to start this. I need to, uh, I need to be a part of something like this. And I'm going to make it happen. A dear friend of mine is Matt Markins. Matt Markins is the president of Awana Clubs International. Matt Markins and I first met, um, boy, Matt, I feel like you and I first met back when you were running the D6 conference, but was it before that, or was that when we first met? 
Certainly in that season, absolutely. Somewhere around 08. Yeah, 08. And we've been friends ever since. Um, I like to play tricks on Matt. Matt always knows when I come to visit Kit uh, Awana HQ because I find a way in your office to play a prank, don't I? Do I or do I not? <laughs> You've left me a few surprises along the way. We'll just say that. I have. I have. So I've somehow I always find a way to get a key to Matt's office and just let him know I stopped by and I was thinking about him. Matt, awesome picture behind you on the wall. Yeah, it's my family right there. Now get out of the way for a minute. All right. Yeah, this that's is much really better sweet. looking than I am. So that's my wife, Katie. We've been married 22 years. Yeah. Our oldest son, Warren, who, who's part of the class of 2020. Uh, wow. He just graduated. And then our youngest son, Hudson, is 15. So That's crazy. Those boys are growing up. Yeah, no kidding. Your girls, too. They are. Yeah. Um, Matt, thanks for joining me. It's good to be with you. Matt was a part of a book project that... I'm pretty excited about, and I, you've heard me talk a lot about it. It's this one right here called Resilient. And this is probably one of the best books that's been written in a while about the discipleship of children and yeah. why we're doing what we're doing. Matt, what really inspired you and Valerie Bell and the good folks that you work with over at Awana sure. to put such energy into this project? Well, you know, I think we're reminded by just what we we've experienced in the last three years of why we've written the book. So one of our, one of our chief thoughts, of course, we're, we wrote this in 2018 and 19, yeah. um, not knowing what God had in store for 2020, but yeah. a big part of the reason why we wrote the book is to say, are we, are we adequately preparing our kids for 2050? Mm. So 2050 is going to be a very different future. And so as we look, as we look at a global pandemic, as we look at, racism and that's still alive and well and the needed reconciliation in our culture yeah. it's what a what a fresh reminder of why we wrote the book is that we're going into a very different future so near the beginning of the book ryan we asked the question or we essentially say we we fear that we're giving our kids lesser things that may not travel with them into their future hmm. and so i think that's a it's an inspiring provocative thought for all of us is are are we giving kids lesser things that are not going to Help them be resilient good. disciples in the future. That's a good one. That's good. And I love, I love that resilient. Such a strong word. Matt, you don't have to um, flip through the book very long to realize that you and your team at Awana did a lot of research. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of good data in here. Talk to us about that. What do you find that maybe surprised you or didn't surprise you as you were doing this research? Yeah, uh, we certainly did. We put, we put a lot into it. You know, I would say... In terms of research, it was definitely six years in the making. So we, we ourselves conducted four projects that informed our writing. And then okay. like, like you, Ryan, we have access. We all have access to the Barna Group and yep. Sticky, Sticky Faith, Lifeway Research, and so many others. But when we compiled it all together, there were kind of three overarching thoughts that we felt like the Kidman community was saying as we, we really looked for the key themes. And one of them, the first one is we all have a heart to make disciples as a Kidman community. I mean, that's why we're in this, you know, we have a heart to make disciples, but we see room for improvement. So that was kind of the, the first overall thought. The second thought is we fear we may have put too much on lesser things, which is what I was referring to a minute ago. And then the third thought is that we sometimes make decisions based on what's best for us as adults maybe not what's best for that child's spiritual journey. So those were kind of the three overall arching findings. But one, one particular point I'd love to point out is we asked the question to Kidman leaders in one of our projects, how carefully are the team evaluating and tracking and measuring the overall Kidman program? And on a five-point scale, it was 2.99, just under halfway. And I, really? I, think, I think what we hear the Kidman community saying is we have a heart to make disciples. We just don't know of all the things that we do. We're not quite certain what we do that's most effective and how can we put more energy into that and be able to, to manage that a little differently. That's more a really good point because we do do so much. I mean, yes. children's ministry is so pro programmatic and we're all the time thinking programs and next event and We've got Sunday school and kids worship and 
a lot of churches are doing Wednesday nights and some even Sunday night programming and then there's small groups and it's a little overwhelming. Matt, as you guys did this research, as you talked to people, as you put this together, what were you reminded of when it comes to really the core, like the objectives of this is really, this is what we do and we don't want to forget this. Or that maybe the better question of what we do is why we do. So this is why we are doing what we're doing. Yeah. Thoughts. Well, one of the things that keeps me up at night is just the sheer, the sheer amount of responsibility that a kid and leader has in the local church. You, you just mm -hmm. write several things. We've got VBS, uh, yeah. all the programming of a, of a weekend event. Then there's special events all throughout the year. And then there might be weekly tasks and weekly events as well. You add that up, it, it, it's a lot, you know? So that, that, that burdens me to think about all that Kidman leaders are responsible for. Mm -hmm. And so I think for, for us, it was just getting down to what, what is the heart of what we're doing. And it comes down to obviously to reaching kids with the gospel, making sure they're, yeah. they know Jesus and that they can grow with him as disciples and that they're a part of this community called the church, which is God's mission center uh, to the to the you know to, to the world mm -hmm. so really what's important it's it's disciple making so in just as few words as possible so our, our kind of our overarching thought is can we help kidman leaders shift our mindset from children's ministry to child discipleship and do you yeah that's good because do you feel like when we hear children's ministry sometimes by default we think we think pro programmatically um where we really need to make sure our focus is on that discipleship and a discipleship roadmap, which I think is one of the great things about ministries like Awana, because you, it, these are great tools for the church, great tools for mom and dad at home to really get their kids in the word. Um, it really is a discipleship roadmap in one sense really as kids are building relationships with other kids and adults as they are weekly hiding God's word in their heart. They're building that foundation. So big hats off to ministries like Awana because you are making a big difference. Mm. Um, Matt, Thank let's you. talk about Awana for a minute. So I'm, I've mentioned at the beginning, by the way, love the tea. I've got to get one of those t-shirts. Yeah. That is pretty, that's pretty sweet. Um, Let's talk about Awana. Talk about Awana. Maybe some of the listeners or viewers today are, are like, yeah, we do Awana at our church. That's great. Maybe there are some people, they're like, I grew up in Awana or my the church, a church I used to be at had Awana. Tell us what's going on with Awana. Is Awana still the Awana that we grew up as kids? Has it morphed? Just give us kind of a, a state of the nation on what's going on with the ministry of Awana and how you're currently serving churches. Awana certainly is an organization. Our headquarters are in Chicago, Illinois. But in terms of our partnerships with churches, Awana exists in 65,000 churches around the world in 122 countries. That's so nice. we, like to, we like to say the sun never sets on the Awana ministry. Yeah. Uh, just this week, there's going to be 5 million kids. Uh, it, you know, Kind of pre-COVID, it would be five million kids who are going to be engaging in a WANA program every, any given week around That's the crazy. world. So, and in the, in the United States, there's twelve thousand churches that we have some level of relationship with. So, mm -hmm. uh, ha having said that, Ryan, there's the WANA program can take on different forms at the most local level. Uh, Awana as a ministry is a highly flexible and adaptable. I, I wouldn't say that we were always flexible and adaptable, Ryan, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. when we made our pivot, as you're deeply familiar with, when we made our mm -hmm. pivot in 2007, we said, we've got to get away from a programmatic centric model that says, this is how you have to do it to what's going to work and be most effective at reaching kids of the gospel and engaging them as disciples. And that's how we've been able to scale to 120. 22 countries around the world. So what's going on with us is in addition to helping churches through midweek spaces with Awana clubs, which now is highly adaptable and flexible. We did not used to be so. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, here in the U.S., we're also launching July 15th, a new weekend digital curriculum called Bright. And we'd certainly love mm -hmm. to tell you guys more about that. I love it. So let's, di let's, let's dig into this for just a minute. So when you talk about Awana being highly flexible, yep. Um, 
can Awana work for a church that doesn't do midweek, only does, sun, let's just say only does Sunday mornings? So maybe yep. they do Sunday mornings and they do small groups during the week. Or do you really need a Sunday night or a Wednesday night? Talk to us about that. Oh, no, absolutely. So if, if when you say can Awana work, I'm assuming you mean what we know of as Awana club. Traditional, uh, yeah, that's yeah, right. The, the, answer is, the answer is, yes, and let me give you a quick example. The answer is Chipotle. You know, Chipotle, uh, which I love Chipotle. It's a, I, I don't know what they put in their food, but it, there's some level oh, of addictive great. ingredients in yep. there. Uh, <laughs> Chipotle has a certain number of ingredients. You know, the, the, this is what they have, and you can slice it and dice it and make different components. Uh, with those same ingredients, you might come out with a burrito, a taco, a salad, et cetera. In, in the same way, Awana has three primary components, large group, small group, and engagement time, uh, which historically has been called game time. Mm -hmm. So you can take our curriculum that all, our curriculum has been entirely redesigned over the last seven years. Yeah. So it, it, we did it with that in mind. So if your church does large groups or small groups or any level of engagement time, Awana can adapt into that environment because that's exactly how we designed it. I love it. Love it. And will you talk to us about Bright, this Sunday morning curriculum that launches July 15th, just a month away. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, because our mission is to reach uh, every child everywhere, uh, mm -hmm. we know that we are known, we're deeply known in the U.S. as being a midweek ministry, although that's not our mission, how we're programmatically known. So mm -hmm. we know to help churches effectively make disciples, we need to have a, a curriculum that's designed for the weekend space. So we set out uh, to develop that, but to do it through the lens of child discipleship. Uh, so it's, it's designed to help you make disciples who are going to go into a, a very different future than you and I grew up in, uh, yeah. who are going to culture and lead the church of 2050. So bright, it's named bright because we believe that today's kids are the bright future of the church. Mm -hmm. And we believe that today's kids can engage the culture and can lead the church of 2050, but it's got to be based on discipleship. So if you're a local church leader, a kidman leader, and, you're, and your heart is in continuing to go more toward discipleship, we designed it with that in mind. So there's three primary things we focus on. We want to help your leaders and volunteers uh, focus on belonging believing and becoming belonging that's a highly relational environment so we give them weekly uh tips through through videos podcasting and etc on ways they can be more highly relational with kids the second one's believing that's deeply scriptural and becoming that's highly experienced research shows that when those three are together relationships experiences and highly scriptural that kids stick with their faith much longer and i love it awana.org and if they want if anybody wants to know more about the sunday morning curriculum what's resilient disciples.com go to resilient disciples.com and that's probably how they can get this as well yep okay. absolutely resilient disciples matt final question for the children's ministry community everybody's watching listening live right now or catching this sometime through the day that's there's thinking matt that's right i don't want to just do programs i don't want to just do ministry I really want to be about discipleship. What's one thing they can start doing even this weekend? Well, I'm going to break the rules because that's what I do. I'm going to say two. And I'm, I'm, good with I'm two. not just saying this because it, it, reach out to me. I'll mail you the book for free. So the first thing is, uh, first thing is, I think they should read this because we're, we're yep. trying. I think, I think it's a, an important conversation that I think is on the minds of a lot of people. But the yep. second thing is, the second thing is to start asking hard questions. What we're doing with kids, is it going to prepare them? for a future where the secular culture may be increasingly hostile to the adults of the future who are Christians. Are we preparing them? Are we adequately preparing them? That's a great conversation churches need to be having. I love it. Matt Markins, check out the book. If you can afford it, buy it. It will be, it's a hardback. It's a beautiful book. So it's going to look great on, on your shelf. And it's a great read. Even the pages are in color. Um, so it's, it's a great book to read. But you heard Matt. Um, if you absolutely just can't afford it, email me yeah. or Matt. We'll, we'll yeah. make sure you get the book. But most of you yeah. should be able to come up with the 15 or 20 bucks, whatever the book is. Ryan, if anyone book. ever reaches out to you and needs a book, you tell me and we'll, we'll send them the copies. We'll do it. Thank you, Matt. Right. We'll do it. Thanks. And check out resilientdisciples.com. It's Matt Markins. Love the ministry of Iwana. Matt, we opened back up two weeks ago, our midweek. Good. And uh, Beth and I were walking around last in our WANA program. I love how you said it's flexible. We go all year long. So we just kind of adapt in the summer, but all those kids were back for a WANA last night. They still call it a WANA, even though it's like a summer program. 
Yeah. I love Awana. I love it. And I love what you all are doing. Well, um, thank you, Ryan. Keep up the great work. I'm a big fan. Love you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. All right. See you. It's Matt Markins. Go check out awana.org. Also check out Resilient Disciples. Um, dot com. You can learn more about the book. You can also learn more about the Sunday Morning Bright curriculum. Man, it was a good coffee chat. These coffee chats keep getting better and better. I love them. Community, um, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you are doing. Um, you are making a big difference. I'd like to share my screen one time before we bounce. So let me do that with you. Um, just for those of you that are catching us late, all right, or just logging in, go check out kidsmatter.com. I love what, or actually, it wasn't on the coffee chat. I was talking to Corey Jones. We were recording a podcast right before the coffee chat, and I said to all the podcast listeners, if you've not been to kidsmatter.com in a while, go check it out. And Corey said, actually, if you've not been to kidsmatter.com in a day, go check it out. He said, because there, there's literally new stuff popping on here every day. Uh, go check it out. And there, there, there are, these are, here are two new things just in the last 12 hours. Skippy Shades. This is a fun crowd breaker game. The kids have, the kids are going to vote. All right, check this out. It's time to play Skippy's Shades. Which color do you think he will wear? Hands up for red, hands down for yellow. If you are correct, you get to stay in the game. If you are wrong, you are out. Let's go. If your hands were up for red, you can stay in the game. If your hands were down for yellow, you are out. It's time for round two. All right, that is Skippy Shades. Silly games like this for crowd breakers. Kids really get into them, don't they? This is a new one in the last uh, 20 or 12 hours as well. Uh, fact or fiction, Bible edition. This is a fun one. The kids have to guess whether it's fact or fiction. The facts will light up green. The fiction will light up red. Fiction. Also, check out Kids Matter Pro if you've not checked out Kids Matter Pro. Uh, hundreds of you are visiting the Kids Matter site every day and finding downloads for your ministry. You really need to join Kids Matter Pro. We're going to give you a subscription to Kids Matter Magazine. We will send you three brand new, never seen before downloads at the beginning of every month. Um, in June, Kids Matter Pro members received four downloads. These downloads retail at least $20 a month, which covers the price of the membership. We're also doing a monthly Q&A session with Ryan Frank. Our first one is Thursday next week. Where we're going to have an open discussion around race and children's ministry. Um, we're doing these on Zoom. They're interactive. And if you get, you get access to these calls if you are a member of Kids Matter Pro. So go check it out, Kids Matter Pro. Friends, have a great weekend. Thanks for joining me today for the coffee chat. Thank you to Marta Cortez. Thank you to Matt Markins. If you have a topic, a question, a recommended guest I bring on the show, if you would like to join me on the show, text 833-792-6372. Have a great weekend. <laughs>